Today I'm playing with uh, CCTV cameras again. Uh, this one is an Ank C500. So Ank have sent me this one for a test and review, but I kind of actually have a project in mind for this one. Uh, now this is a, as you can see, it's a dome camera for starters, which means you mount it to the roof or the wall and then you can position it anywhere within its frame so you can, you know, point it at the things you need to do. Uh, obviously, I have just noticed there's a little box, and not a box, a door on the hat for settings. I presume the SD card uh, goes in there. That's just an optional thing, the SD card. Oh, if you've included Allen keys, that's nice. Now, this, did I say this is a power over ethernet camera? So for power over ethernet, what you have, what tends to happen is you have one of the RJ45 connectors, and through that runs your data over a LAN cable and your power. Oh, here's a LAN cable right here. Uh, a LAN cable, like this one, you just have your LAN cable and that plugs into your, uh, either your network video recorder or your power over ethernet switch. Because I'm going to try a bit of DIY CCTV CCTVing, because I would like to replace my current old power over ethernet uh, cameras that have slowly died, the NVR's slowly dying as well, and replace it with something new. Granted, yes, I've got uh, Natapmos and Reolink smart cameras, but I'd like to have a set of cameras that records to something that is mine, because uh, I've got an, an Unraid NAS set up in the house, and I'm wondering if there's any apps or docker images I can use to set up a CCTV system, use my own cameras and have them all connect and talk to each other and be happy like that. So, first things first is, I should show you some of this camera. I have no idea what this camera's actual specifications are. I imagine it is full HD. If I had paid attention when I was doing it, I uh, would have a uh, thing that blah 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 blah. Right, we need PI. That's sorry, that's what I was telling you about. So, you either get the power from your network cable attached to your power of Ethernet NVR or your power of Ethernet switch, uh, or you can apply a standard 12 volt power supply and power it that way and just use it as a normal network camera and it doesn't have to be power over Ethernet and I can't get the rubber thing to go back on the end of the thing. Go on. Right, good seal. Uh, oh, I do like it. I'm not gonna. I, I like it when you get a drill template. It saves me trying to make my own. It's a pain in the ass making your own one. But yeah, it's a matter of oh, unflip plastic, dismount the base, reattach the base, and screw it back in. So, according to the thing, all I have to do is unclip the plastic base, unclip the plastic base, unclip the plastic. Oh, it's a it's a good clip. Oh man, it's, you're gonna have to unclip more all the way around. Come on. That's, that's really clipped in there. Where's the next? It's got one right there. I don't know if I can get near it with a, a spudger would be better. But I don't have a spudger, so we're just going to use my ugly screwdriver. Oh man, that is attached. Come on, guys. What are you supposed to just rotate? The, oh, there it goes. A bit of, um, that's well clipped in. I mean, yeah, that's not going to fall off. Right, that leaves you your open ball. Oh, not even in shot. There we go. Smashing. And you would mount that to your ceiling or wall. Because uh, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to mount the camera at some point uh, in the future on the wall in the workshop here, so that I can leave experiments running and then leave them, but they're not fully unattended. I've got a camera I can look at. For example, the power stations, if I want to run that and have a load on it, and the load takes like two or three hours to drain the battery, I can at least have a camera in here uh, pointed at things and make sure they're not going on fire and I can rush outside and put the fire out if I need to Wait, did I tell you the specs of this camera? did I? anyway it's a 2.8mm lens not even entirely sure what that means in the you know yeah let's let's just it doesn't, doesn't say in here alright yeah so that flap that I told you about that flap is where the there's a reset button and the SD card slot exists under there. Let's have a quick peek in there, shall we? Happy days. Right, what was, where was I? Eh, uh, no, right. Oh, I was going to show you the 
the slat. Let us open the said slot for where the A big side and a small side? Yes. You're just failing to undo screws. Let us try to not drop said screws. If it was really good, they'd be cat of so we couldn't take them out. Which would be nice. Are they? Are they? Are they? They appear to... No, they didn't fall out. And in there is a reset button and a micro SD card slot. Could do. Right, that's what we've seen in there. Let's screw that tight to keep the water out. I assume that's the bottom though. Yes, that is the bottom. So when this is in its ball, the obviously this door is inside the case. So you will not be able to unscrew it. As you says, well, when you put it in. So there's, you see, it says up there. So that would be the top. So wherever you want your thing, obviously more likely to be pointing down. So you would hopefully have it that, like, like that, you know, for pointing down, and then your door is inside so you can't unscrew it and obviously and then whatever angle you're putting it on going round. There is going to be a point though, at some point, if you wanted it pointed straight ahead, you know, like straight up and down, that that door could be there, but what you would do is then just rotate it round to the other side so it's um, covered up. And obviously you can't see uh, the hatch to reset it. If you were a scumbag criminal. Right, as I said, I'm making a DIY. So what I need just now, or what I've bought from the Amazon, is a power over Ethernet switch. This isn't part of this review, it's just me setting up and a thing. So power over Ethernet switch and electricity cable. Goodbye. Uh, right, power over ethernet switch and power. So a typical power over ethernet switch will have unpowered, uh, an unpowered uplink, which that's the one you connect your home network to, and then your all your powered ones are on a switch by themselves. Well, this one's got eight switches, so you can have up to eight cameras on that. And they just connect to your home network, and then, well, those you can actually browse. These cameras you can browse via uh, their own built-in, display, you can just connect them via, via a web browser once you know their IP address. And you can also connect them via a technology called ONIF, which is a standard set of protocols that all these ONIF cameras are supposed to support, and you get special ONIF software that just connects them, and it knows how to talk to them, and they all talk together, and they can all play nicely. So, that that kind of plugged in there. It's not the nicest. Uh, I have a horrible uh, network cable here. That just broke. Oh, I just broke a tab off my network cable. That's why it didn't fit properly. Anyway, right, I've turned that on. And the lights have lit. Right, well, there's two LED lights at the top there. You probably can't see them or they've now gone off. So I presume it's doing its startup stage. Can't tell. And also, it's not connected to the network, so, so, so we'll need to run a network connection over to there, and then we'll browse the camera, and I'll show you, show you what it looks like. Okay, slight bit of faffing uh, about on a laptop before we get uh, started. So the ONIF bit of the camera that I want to use just now uh, is turned off by default. Probably for security, but so you have to first of all download their camera discovery software so you know the IP address. Then you can browse to the IP address of the camera and then you can turn on the ONIF bit that I need to turn on so I can have anything that supports ONIF talk to the said camera. But it'll also let you show me the show me show you uh, actually connecting to uh, Internet Explorer or Chrome or whatever and then you can view the camera that way. Currently pointed in the, the middle of nowhere. But it's not the end of the world. Granted, it's a bit more secure. But let's see if it can hopefully find the cameras. Uh, yes, please enable your auto update, whatever it is. Allow access. Great. 
go, go on then, upgrade to whatever version you think you're supposed to upgrade to is the software. That one. Yes, ADP tool. Right, can. Yes, do what you want. Oh, it's by, it's by Hick Vision. So this is a uh, Hick Vision. I don't know if the software is Hick, Hick Vision. Right, anyway, 10.0.0.32. So if we go and browse to 10.0.0.32, we should be able to. Yes, thank you. Hey, connect to the camera. Yay. Oh, and then you have to do the set up your. Oh, suggest a strong password. Uh, yeah, sure, use a really strong password like that one. I have no idea what it is now, so here we go. Okay, hopefully Google will remember it. Oh, and security questions. Man, why is oh, all of this login just for a security camera? Just so I can use it as a network camera. Does it work in Chrome? Is this going to be the thing that it uses a protocol that doesn't work in Chrome? Doesn't matter, I don't need to be able to see it. No, go, go, go. I just need to change the camera settings. We're, we're configuration. Right, live view doesn't work because we're in Chrome. But can at least configure it. And there must be an option for on if somewhere. Please. Network service. No. Pro call. Enable open network video interface. Yes. No? Add a user? Yeah, add add me. Add a user. I mean, we're going to literally be inside my own network. It's an IP camera. Oh, man. All the, this is a lot of effort just to set up a single network camera. I wonder if there's this much effort using their own software. Oh, it's just weak, but I'll take it. Well, right, let's just add in my weak password. Right, now that that small nightmare of setting it up for just connecting to ONIF is uh, done, let's do... Let me use the software that I know how to use, which is ONIF ONIVIR which is supposed to be, oh, it's supposed to only viewer. And then, oh, discover, it's none of them. Wait, it was there a second ago. Discover new device, 10.0.32, our username that we just set up. Okay, what I did was just type my password wrong. Type my password wrong. Ah! Great, small eternal loop there. Right, that works. So, test successful. Great, smashing. Save. And now that gives us, where does it go? Right, it should be pointing it. Wait. Why is it none of them? Oh, is that one? It's just had a weird snapshot. So hopefully you can see on the screen that. Please bear in mind that what you see on screen is the preview stream from this camera and not the actual recording stream. So in theory, I should be able to set this up in the workshop and have it pointed at whatever I am working on. Ta-da! Such as that. Oh, I like that it look, it changes the, oh, it changes the clock when it goes over a white thing to be black so you can still read it. Oh, that's quite clever. Not seen that before. But yeah, that's a, a nice wide angle. So how far away am I? So here I am. 
And here's slightly further. Okay, that's a nice wide angle. Right. So basically when you use it in ONIF, ONIF mode, it's a dumb camera. It has no technology, no, no science about it. I don't think it has any, any. Anyway, your network video recorder and... Let me stop my screen capture. Stop. Yeah, as I was saying, so it's your network video recorder or your digital video recorder or whatever software you're going to connect to. It's the bit that does the clever stuff. All the camera's doing is displaying you with, you know, high resolution images, which this should be. Did I, did I look up the specs? Did I? Did we ever find the specs for this camera? Let me check for you. Right, so it's an ANK C500, we'll call it. ANK. C500. That's him. Ank C500. Oh, that, sorry, the most important thing I forgot is it's, it's 40 quid, this camera. That's the best thing about it. It's cheap. It is 40 pounds. Right, specifications. It is HD. It is 5 megapixel, 2.8 millimeter lens. And yeah. Plug and play, power of Ethernet setup. Yes, it probably is if you're just plugging it into a network video recorder or a digital video recorder that's ANK branded or using the ANK. So ANK have got a lot of software as well. You can install it on your PC and whatnot. It's, I think it's called ANK Vision. And that also lets you connect to your, your camera and let you adjust all the settings and whatnot. But I want to build my own. So hence I'm using my own power of Ethernet switch. And well, the the software on my phone is really good for positioning when you're outside and you just uh, put your cameras up. You can then just go through them one at a time and make sure they're pointed where they're supposed to be. And it saves, well, it's the best bit of somebody not going left a bit, right a bit, left a bit, up a bit, down a bit. You can just stand and hold your phone and point it exactly where you want it. That's the best bit about the software of your, on your phone that way. I'm fairly sure I think must do an app as well. They must do, they must, an app must exist so you can connect to them via your phone. But yeah, so if anyone has any suggestions on a Docker based or Unraid based uh, CCTV software for setting up and creating my own network video recording thing, uh, just leave a comment down below. That would be most helpful. I bought obviously the 8 port switch because I'm going to add more cameras to it eventually. One in here, and then we'll have. We'll have ones outside as well, covering everything, because the network cable's already there. It's just the cameras and my old equipment that has slowly died. Uh, so, any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below, and I will try my very best to answer them.